yesterday i was reviewing and responding to a question on the microsoft dynamics gp gp user group forum uh, gpod about power bi and about accessing uh, the headcount of employees by department and i was thinking about what the person who asked the question was probably doing i was thinking about my suggestion and i was thinking about a suggestion from another user which was an excellent one and i started realizing this is really a good time to talk about the understanding it takes of knowing your data to get exactly what you want to get because sometimes you may ask something and it could be derived from multiple scenarios and the answers may vary a little bit. So you need to be a data consultant. You need to understand your data model to be able to ask the questions or to set up the data sources so that people who are using it don't have to think about it. So in this case, I'm gonna show you, this example's from Dynamics GP, but it could be from anything. So if the pay, if payroll employee count doesn't apply to you, think about it as customers or prospects or leads or whatever you may want to count in your organization and the fact that it can come from multiple sources. There are three different ways that you could obtain headcount in Power BI from the GP database. And the first one is from the employee card itself, which is where we just maintain our employee count. The second one would be if we utilize the unit accounts from the general ledger. The third one is from the payroll transactions or checks themselves. So let's take a look at the three of these. Now, this is the first in a four part series that I'm doing in uh, doing on this. The second, the third and the fourth part will be showing specifically how I created these visuals from these three separate data sources. Let's start with the employee card. So this is one where I just went and got from the employees. And I think this is what the person who asked the question was doing. And this is always going to look at the employee count as it exists at the time of the refresh. So if I refresh this today, and today happens to be January 28th, then it's going to show me what the employees look like as of January 28th. Now, there are some pros and cons to each of these, and I want to talk about what those are now so that this is why you understand why being a data consultant is important. So if I'm looking at the employee count, so I have all of my departments listed here and how many employees are in each one. And again, I'm just looking at the payroll card. There's a couple things I want to take into consideration. It's like, and, and this would be true of all of them. When do I want to count my employees? So when do I want to know how many employees I had in the month? Do I want to know on the last day of the month? Do I want to know in the middle of the month? Do I want to know how many employees I had active during the whole month? I need to know these questions. Now, if I want to know how many employees I had active for the whole month, then looking at the employee card is not going to work for me because if somebody was inactivated yesterday or today and I refresh, then that employee was active during the month. I would want them in the count, but it's not going to show me them in the list. I'm only going to see who's active as of now. Also, in the case of GP, and this is GP specific, but I guess it could apply to everybody. If you're looking at some kind of maintenance record or master record, typically you have default information in. So I'm just looking at the default department. So if somebody split between departments, then I'm not going to see that split here. Also, if somebody's part-time, do I want to see them as half an employee or a fractional employee, or do I want to see them as a whole employee? Now, so the second uh, part of the series will show how I did the data modeling for this, pulling from the employee card. The second option here in the middle is utilizing what initially came to me as a recommendation, utilizing the general ledger unit accounts. Now, this is the next sentence is specific to GP, so sorry for those of you who are not using GP, but unit accounts are non-financial accounts where you can just count things like number of employees. And if you want to increase the count, you debit. If you want to decrease your credit on unit, on unit accounts, debits do not equal credits, but you can budget for them. In this example, I'm, I'm looking at the balance each month, and you can see for each of my first four fiscal periods, by department, I can see how many employees I have. Now, one thing to note here is 
because I'm using the unit accounts, I could use half. In this particular case, I have 29 at the end of each month, right? And I wouldn't really want to see a total here because I do not have 116 employees. I just have the 29 each month. But as I'm looking at this, in the month of March, I have one employee who looks like they split their time perhaps, or maybe I have two part-time employees. So if I want to see part-time employees as fractional or whatever you happen to be viewing, or I want to split time, then utilizing some kind of source like this would be a good tool. I like that. In the case of GP, it does require an extra entry, but it's one entry, it's super easy, and you could use it on financial statements as well. If this were comparable to a hotel, for example, where you're tracking how many room nights you rent each night, you could actually look at your financial statements per rented room. So you could literally see how much laundry detergent it cost you for every room you rented from month to month. And then that's a really cool comparison because then you're talking about comparing in pennies instead of big dollars. The third part of the series is showing how I did this data modeling. The third section I want to show you is where I'm actually pulling from transactions and another user suggested this. Now the difference here is one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a distinct count by employee so that you uh, are not just counting the number of transactions. In this particular case I'm counting checks and I'm counting checks for the whole month of January and I'm just doing it, you know, give me every unique count. Again, I see anybody who was paid during the month this way. I see even if they're inactive now, if somebody has their time split between departments, it's going to list them as a full employee in each of those departments. So although I might have 29 employees, it might show I have 40 because people might be working in different departments. You'll also notice that the total number here is different than from the card. That means that we have someone who's active that just didn't receive a paycheck. And then the question is, would I want to count that employee too? So that's something we're thinking about. And in the fourth part of this series, I'll show you how I did this data modeling. I thought this was a really cool way of seeing the importance of understanding your data. Because in all three of these cases, I'm getting the payroll employee headcount from the same database. But there are pros and cons to each of these. So whoever's doing the initial data modeling, they really need to understand that and they need to be asking those questions. What happens if somebody split time? You want to, do you want to know every uh, headcount from every person we paid or who's active as of a certain date? Because all of these answers could easily yield different information. I also want to point out from the payroll transaction case, this payroll, this is the check date here, but this is actually not necessarily a representation that somebody was active in the month of January. It's possible that 29th employee started working in January but didn't get their first check until Mar or February. It's also possible that somebody who is was inactive for the whole month of January worked the last week in December, so now they're getting paid in January. So you need to think about all of these things. So stay tuned for the next three parts, and as always, I hope this helps.